Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ale Tidiano! Um, hello, welcome. It's uh, good to be back here after uh, three years in my case. Um, one, because I've missed uh, Exxonor Prague uh, 2020 and afterwards two years of pandemic. But hopefully now things will uh, get back to normal. <laughs> uh, so in this presentation, I will talk about creating frameworks, a new way that we've introduced in this, um, uh, the past two years by using um, an extension script. So we'll talk a bit about the framework concept in Oxygen, what challenges um, our user faced while we're working on a framework, and have a quick look at two use cases, how to create a new framework, and how to, to extend uh, an existing one. So uh, a framework is basically just a configuration together with the various uh, resources like CSS files or um, uh, schemas, um, some wizard-defined actions. Um, and all this uh, bundle offers a specific uh, support for a particular type of XML vocabulary, um, like DITA or Dogbook or TI, for example. So when you are working with, uh, with an XML document in Oxygen, uh, chances are in the background, transparently, there is such a framework configuration that it um, offers you specific uh, support. So uh, the classic, the initial way of creating uh, and working with such a framework configuration was by using the graphical user interface in Oxygen. So one would go to options, preferences, there's this uh, document type uh, or framework association. And then uh, you see there are quite a few of them. And uh, here in this uh, interface, you change various uh, things for this, um, for this frame framework. So uh, working like this, it's, uh, it's easy, it's straightforward, but um, it can be cumbersome in some uh, cases. Uh, because there's a, a loop that you might be forced uh, to, to, to perform. Um, so you want, if you want to change something, you'll probably go to, to this configuration. For example, I want to, um, to change a bit to the toolbar and I make some changes. And then I uh, go back uh, to the editor and I uh, analyze my changes and perhaps the, the toolbar doesn't look like I want it to look, so then I go back um, through these uh, two or three dialogues and try it again and again, so it, it uh, can become um, annoying uh, <coughs> at some point. Um, another question, another situation is, um, um, so requirements differ from one company to another. And uh, so we, we ship a number of built-in templates and we try to uh, make them as uh, good as possible. But uh, each company wants to change it a bit to, to according to their requirements. And uh, in this situation, they have two choices. Uh, they can either uh, alter or change the, the actual topic. And by that, I mean just what, what you've seen. So you go to the to the framework and, and you make the changes. And um, the downside with this approach is that uh, when a new Oxygen version is released, uh, chances are we will also make some improvements to the framework. So if you've, if you've uh, altered the built-in framework, then it's up to you to compare the two configurations and reapply the, your changes to, to the updated framework. Um, it is possible, but it, it takes a bit of uh, care while performing. The so um, what we recommend people to do is to instead extend the, the existing framework. And uh, uh, you do that, you have an extend button here, and um, afterwards you make the changes, but uh, what gets saved is um, it's um, it's like a, an edit script. So we 
we record all the changes that you've done to the base framework and we, we apply it automatically. So when you switch to a new version of Oxygen, we will uh, reapply this, uh, these changes automatically. Um, one limitation that we have with this approach is the fact that um, the extension, this type of extension goes only one, on one level. So if you already have uh, an extension of a base framework, you, you cannot extend it any further. So to go around these um, annoyances and limitations, we've uh, added the possibility to create a new framework or to extend an existing one using uh, a script. So a, a, the script uh, looks uh, like this. Um, if you want to extend the framework, you just specify the name of the base framework, and then you have a number of uh, things that you can perform uh, to, to change the base framework. Like for example here, um, I'm adding a new CSS to change the way the author mode uh, looks, looks like. And uh, the script also works on mul multiple levels, so you can have a framework A that extends framework B, which extends framework C, and, and so on and so forth. So to create a new framework, I can uh, show you how that is. So here we have uh, an XML. Um, so we, the validation doesn't work because there's no schema. Content completion also don't work. Doesn't work because uh, the schema is not found. So for it, I've, I will create uh, such a, a framework extension script. Uh, if you want to create one yourself, you just uh, go to new and then um, there's, there are two templates for you to choose and uh, you get something similar. So uh, I've commented bits uh, in this to speed things up because we, we only have, uh, yes, uh, 15 minutes. So uh, obviously I need some association rules. This is how Oxygen decides uh, which frameworks to match to a document. In this case, I will use a public ID. And uh, afterwards I will also uh, specify an XML catalog. So the, the schema is, fine, is found. And if we, we save this uh, script and switch back, then the validation begins to work, the content completion begins to work as well. Uh, the, the author mode doesn't work yet because it needs a CSS. That's how we render the XML in the author mode using CSS rules. So we return to the, to the script and we uncomment some more. So this is where we add uh, a specific CSS for, for rendering this uh, document. And uh, now the author mode works too. Um, let's add a, an action to create a table because uh, tables can be uh, difficult to insert uh, uh, row by row and cell by cell. And uh, hopefully, uh, luckily, um, this um, XML vocabulary supports the calls uh, table model. And uh, so I will use uh, one of the built-in actions that we have to insert a call stable. So we need an author action. And with these extension scripts, author actions are collected automatically from uh, within the framework directory from, a, I'm not sure if I can increase this one. Uh, so from a directory with a predefined name. And this is, uh, one of how uh, this action looks like. So this is again something new. The author actions were only configurable in the graphical user interface and that too could become quite annoying at some time because there were a lot of uh, 
cases, contexts to, to cover inside such an author action. If you are in this expat context, you need to do this. If you are in uh, the other expat context, you need to do that. So now you can define these author actions um, externally in, a, in a, an XML file. And uh, this one, for example, you, uh, like I said, uses a built-in insert table op operation. And um, it's pretty simple. It just uh, specifies the, the fragment, the XML fragment, to insert in, into each cell. So we, Oxygen will detect this action automatically. So all we have to do now is uh, just uh, put it in the, in the toolbar, like so. So we add the action. And um, if we want, we can also put it in a contextual menu. We can create another submenu. And uh, another thing we can do is we can replace the, the content completion entry for inserting a table with our actions, because uh, this one will just insert an, an empty table element, um, as opposed with the insert table, which inserts uh, an entire structure. And we'll save it. And um, now we have the action here on toolbar. Uh, there will be here a, a submenu with table actions. We can, uh, there's a, a small dialogue and uh, we insert the, the, the table. Um, I'm not sure when the time. <laughs> It's gone. It's, I had two minutes left, apparently. Uh, right, so the, the second use case is for extending a framework. And uh, we can change the author mode with an additional CSS, add uh, a number of new author actions, maybe uh, configure the content completion. Um, we'll have a quick look at the, at the script. It's similar with the, the first one, but this time we, we specify a base framework, the data framework. We, we increase the priority of the framework. Um, this, uh, when multiple frameworks match on a document, uh, we use this priority to decide uh, which one to, to actually use. And uh, here too, we add an additional CSS to customize the author mode. Um, we remove the bold author action from any everywhere it appears from the toolbar or contextual menu because we, we don't want to use the highlight domain in DITA. And in the toolbars, for example, we put um, an action to insert a warning and we can anchor it after an existing action in the toolbar. So in this case, we, we place it after the paragraph action. Um, the same in the contextual menu, we put this warning inside an existing submenu, the one for uh, inserting uh, new elements. We anchor it after the insert note because they are related and uh, we put it in the contextual menu as well. Uh, so if, if you decide to create new, new frameworks using a script, the script, um, it's worth mentioning that it will be easy to write, easy to test, and also easy, easy to maintain as new Oxygen uh, versions um, are released. And for deployment, uh, like I've mentioned, scripts are automatically detected and loaded, so um, that's why I'm saying that they are easy to develop. But uh, once you are finished with it, you can choose to compile it into a, its compiled form, a .framework file, and ship that to, to your users because um, obviously they, it will load a bit, uh, a bit faster. And um, you have a contextual action, um, the compiled framework extension script, you'll see it here. And um, if you want to automate something in some continuous uh, integration pipelines, there's also a, a script, a compiled framework script that you can uh, run automatically. Thank you, and I think I've just in the nick of time. If you have any questions.